In this video, I'm going to talk you through how to pick the components for your next gaming PC, getting the best performance that you can get inside your budget, making sure you don't go over and spend too much money, and of course, ensuring you can avoid bottlenecks, making sure you've not got one component dragging the others down. Just how do we do it in our build videos? Well, today I'm gonna spill our secret sauce and let you into the world of Geekawatt secrets. Let's do this. I should of course mention that if you're not bothered about the process and just want the best build inside a certain budget, we've got lots of videos covering that. But today we're going to go into just a bit more detail. There are several tools out there which allow you to check that parts are physically compatible with one another, but not necessarily if they're a good match from a performance perspective. PC Part Picker is the most famous, and we're going to be using that as a starting point, but nothing more. The best component to start with, in my view, is normally your graphics card. Now, in the current market, things are just a little bit tricky, but I'm going to go ahead and find ourselves something like this RTX 3050, which comes in at just under $400 over on Newegg at the time of filming this video. Your GPU should make up approximately half of the budget of your system, maybe slightly more in current market conditions, but around 50% is a good starting point. We're going to work off an $800 or $900 budget though, making this roughly $400 graphics card a great fit. Now the next thing we want to do is pick the CPU and motherboard. When it comes to CPUs, you've got AMD or Intel, and each of these manufacturers release a new generation of chips every year or two. AMD have Ryzen 2000, 3000, and 5000. They missed out 4000 for some reason, but let's pretend uh, that's not there. And then on the Intel side, you've got Intel 10th, 11th, and 12th gen. The 10,000, 11,000, and 12,000 series. The higher the number, the newer the series is. Within the series, you'll then find the Ryzen 3, 5, 7, and 9, and the Intel Core i3, 5, 7, and 9. It's almost like this was meant to be. Each of these CPUs essentially rivals one another, with AMD's Ryzen 5 lineup rivaling the Intel i5 lineup, and AMD's Ryzen 7 lineup rivaling Intel's i7 lineup. Makes sense, right? Now, the best way to pick whether you want to go Team Red or Team Blue, AMD or Intel, is to look at the latest reviews. But I'll skip to the chase. Intel 12th generation is frankly where it's at right now. And those are the processors that I'd be looking to use if I were you. Specifically, I'm going to go for the 12400F. On Intel CPUs, you'll often find an F figure at the end if the CPU comes with no included graphics. Fine for us, because we're using a dedicated GPU. Or a K number at the end if the CPU is overclockable, meaning you can run it slightly faster than designed in your motherboard's BIOS. According to the pricing at the time, once again on Newegg, this is coming out at just under $180. On the whole, there's no rule as to how much you should spend for your CPU. But we'll pop a graph on your screen now with our recommended pairings when it comes to gaming. A 3050 is good for an i3 or i5, 3060 and 60 Ti you want to go for the i5 for sure, and above that an i7 or i9 option are good choices. If you're looking for a PC that's great for streaming, video editing or rendering, go for a slightly higher CPU than what we've suggested, as the extra cores will certainly help you. Now what we need to do is we need to pick up a motherboard for our CPU, and to make this easy I'm going to look at motherboard options for AMD and Intel on the latest generations only. For AMD you've got X570 and B550, which are the two motherboard chipsets available. A motherboard chipset basically defines the feature set of a motherboard. The more expensive chipsets comes with more room for more graphics cards, SSDs, and more powerful ports on your rear I.O. And by powerful, I mean like the latest second gen 10 gigabit USB 3 ports and 2.5 or 10 gig Ethernet. On the AMD side, the B550 chipset is probably where you want to go for most builds under $1,200 or $1,300, while X570 gives you extra features if your build is costing just a little bit more. On the Intel side, things get a bit more complicated, as you actually have the Z690 series, the B660 series, and then lower-end motherboards still. Currently, the Intel CPUs support DDR5 or DDR4 memory, with motherboards supporting DDR4 or DDR5, so be careful which one you pick. If you go for a board like this Asus unit, you'll need DDR4, but if you go for a more expensive board like this MSI design, you'll need DDR5, which has its own cost implications we'll come on to shortly. I think in this build, I'm going to go B660. That's what I'd recommend for any Intel system below $1,200. So let's look, shall we, at some of the B660 options available. Here we've got the Gigabyte B660M DS3H. 
a board we've featured recently and has some good reviews. It comes in around $115. As a general rule of thumb for pricing, spend $150 or less if your build is $1,500, and if it's more, spend more money. If you're going for a really enthusiast build, you may need specific features on your motherboard, and that will dictate how much you need to spend, aka if you need 10 gigabit ethernet support on the rear panel or Wi-Fi support, which will set you back a bit more money. Now this motherboard is a DDR4 motherboard, meaning we can pick up some cheaper DDR4 RAM. The newer DDR5 standard is great for high-end builds, but for anything with a 3060 Ti or below, or AMD 6600 XT or below, DDR4 is more than good enough. We're after a 16 gigabyte kit. For Intel, the speed is not quite so important, so 3,3200 megahertz is good. For AMD, you want 3,600 megahertz or higher. That's just a really easy rule to follow. AMD likes fast memory, so make sure you give it it. We're gonna go for this Corsair Vengeance kit that comes in at $89 for a DDR4 3200, and actually it looks like they've got a cheaper non-RGB kit for 66. Maybe that one makes more sense in our budget. As we're already approaching the $700 mark, and it looks like we might go slightly overboard, <laughs> but we'll see. So that's the CPU, motherboard, and RAM dealt with. Check whether or not your CPU comes with an included cooler. For a budget build like this, we're going to use the included cooler, but if you're spending more money, going for a high-end overclockable CPU, you'll want to get an aftermarket unit. Air or liquid, we've discussed these in a separate video topic, which I'll link below. Now that we've selected the motherboard and graphics card, we can choose a case. The length of the GPU and the form factor of your motherboard will dictate the size of the case you need. We've actually made a video covering the top 10 cases to buy in 2022, which is rather handy. And I think I'm actually going to use that advice by looking at Cooler Master's MB320L, a $70 or so case that will support all of our hardware quite nicely. Now we're currently at $826, which sounds like a lot, but we've only got our power supply and storage left to go. And I am gonna look at how we can trim some of our components back later to fit in the budget without bottlenecking. The power supply is really easy. You can see here on PC Part Picker that we've got an estimated system wattage of 321. You basically want to ignore this figure. Now, James, what do you mean ignore this figure? Head over to your GPU manufacturer's website first and check their recommended power supply wattage and go with that. Unless, of course, your PC part picker figure is higher. If it's higher, definitely go for the higher wattage of power supply. But as a general rule of thumb, 650 watts for a 3050 or 3060, 750 watts for anything higher. But check your GPU's product page as that will tell you the recommended wattage. Make sure you don't scrimp on the power supply, but equally, you haven't got to spend a fortune to get something solid. Check the product reviews. That's what us media are here for, to allow you guys to make the best decisions possible. So I think we want a 650 watt unit based on that information. So we're going to tune the wattage right down. You don't have to use PC Part Picker for this. You could go to your favorite retailer and just search for a 650 watt power supply. It looks here like EVJ have got a nice one that's 80 plus bronze certified. Make sure you pick one with an 80 plus certification for just $65. Now these are all parts I'm familiar with, which is why I'm picking them that was rude, which is why I'm picking them quite quickly, but you will take more time in your own build. We're now at $892 overall. These prices are gonna fluctuate a fair bit, and I'm just using PC Part Picker's data for the purposes of the video. We're gonna wrap things up with storage. Now, storage is a really tricky one. Technically, a one terabyte Seagate Barracuda would work well. On a build like this, it's not gonna bottleneck, and at only $30, $40, it keeps us quite well in budget but I would recommend something like a Gen 3 SSD instead. Now, as a general rule of thumb for storage, if you're going for anything higher than an RTX 3070 or AMD 6700 XT, go for Gen 4 storage. That includes drives like the Western Digital SN850, the Seagate Firecuda 530, and the Samsung 980 Pro. If you're going cheaper than that on your graphics card, lower power, basically any SSD is gonna work well. I would recommend though that you go for an NVMe Gen 3 drive. The Samsung SSD SSD 980 non-pro is a great choice and there's one here that's 500 gig for just $60. Now you can see here we're actually about $50 over the budget I wanted to spend originally and there's a few ways we can trim that back. We could definitely save $20, $25 by dropping down to a case from Antec, like this one, that comes in more like the $50 mark. And we could also look at sourcing our GPU in a slightly better way than what we are right now. The storage is another area we've spent big. You could use a hard drive for a build like this, or a lower capacity SSD and a hard drive for mass storage, while cheaper B660 motherboards are also available. But as a general rule of thumb, you want to spend 40 to 50% of your budget on a GPU, go for one of our recommended CPU packs 
pairings, at least for gaming, and ensure you've got at least 16 gigabytes of RAM for any build under $1,300. Past that, you'll want to pick up 32 gigabytes of memory to ensure that you avoid bottlenecking. A few key things to watch out for if you're a first time builder, make sure your case has enough clearance for your CPU cooler, and that includes the height of any fins, the length of any radiators or any of that good stuff. It includes the length and the thickness of your graphics card. The thickness is less of an issue, the length is the main one, so check that's okay. And also make sure that if you pop in a radiator in the front of the case, you're accounting for that, reducing your GPU clearance. To demonstrate this, we'll get some B-roll of a case with a radiator and without, and there you can see its position in relation to the GPU. Also make sure that your case has enough room for your motherboard, aka if it's a mini ITX motherboard, you can go for the smallest type of case. If it's micro ATX, you need something that supports MATX motherboards and so on and so forth. Don't cheap out on your power supply, pick one up from a reputable manufacturer and check that you've gone for enough wattage in your build. Go by your GPU manufacturer's recommendations, not by what any of these configuration sites will tell you your wattage is. Because that is actually your genuine wattage, but if you want to upgrade your system later on or your GPU power surges, you aren't gonna be covered. No one watching this video, even if you're going for an APU, should be going for a power supply with any less than 500 watts. Most people 650 and a good majority 750, but no less than that. Pick up one from EVGA, Cooler Master, Corsair, NZXT or Asus. Any of these big name brand power supplies, Seasonic's another one with good reviews are where you want to go. I hope that's how it pick parts for your next system. Feel free to use our recommended CPU and GPU pairings and our handy little budget rules when putting together your next PC. And if you'd like to see more content like this, make sure to get subscribed. Thanks for watching though, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.